Я скажу вступне слово після Валентина, то скажу, а потім ви будете розказувати про повторку. Шановні колеги, ми продовжуємо. Колеги, ми будемо продовжувати роботу. Наступний топік – це презентація на креативний спеціальний коптер «Клаб Коростин» як ресурс для інтеграції інтернету дисплейців дітей і дітей в хост комуніті. Наші гості – Стерлер Сартюхін, головний директор НГО «Новий Донбас», «Нью Донбас», також народжений головний коптер «Клаб Коростин» АДП, АТО партиципант, Василенко і Влад Рабун. First to speak is Larissa Artyukhina. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome. It's my pleasure to have this opportunity to tell you about the uh, our new joint project and rather a very gratifying project, I would say. A happy project because to help uh, children, to help the IDPs, um, not only just to find some job or the, their place under the sun, so to say, but to find the place where they can happily live, uh, live a happy life, and you know, find the project will bring about the happiness and, and joy to the head of project or the project manager, one, uh, uh, the Russian never does, it's, it's a pleasure. So it's my pleasure to tell you what's, uh, what already happened yesterday in Koroston, uh, officially, uh, there was an official ceremonious opening of the Copter Club Koroston, which actually self-organized and was created, you know, out of uh, now, owing to, 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 to the efforts of the former volunteer in Donbass ATO and detachment of one uh, um, and uh, the and the local children who reside in Korostin, also IDP, uh, internally displaced children from the Crimea and the Donbass area. How it happened, they are going to tell you themselves, but when it became clear that uh, actually uh, the apartment uh, hired, uh, rented by one was too small, actually we stepped in and found to, uh, we managed to find some uh, funding from the government of Latvia, and they would like, we do appreciate their assistance. This was our first joint effort with the Embassy of Latvia and the Republic in Ukraine, and this project uh, turned out to be successful. With the help of one and other guys, we managed to uh, to, to actually to involve the local uh, municipality or the local officials in our, the guys have their own uh, house, uh, C C K C uh, Copter Coruscant and Club, and we use, started to use it as the corporate space. And it turned out that uh, the majority of the community are those wonderful teenagers, no children any longer. They are full of initiative. And it turned out that um, they found uh, they, they 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 found a lot of interest in new technologies, in novel uh, the direction as copters. And uh, that's why our um, NGO New Donbass, Novi Donbass, uh, had an opportunity uh, and chance to participate in this ceremonial uh, meeting, uh, also attended by the mayor of the city and the extraordinary and plenipotential ambassador of the Latvian Republic to Ukraine came there, a lot of children. We had a real festival and the big cake. It was the birthday of our club. I would like one and the guys present here to to tell you what it's, it's all about, actually we cannot even find the, uh, the small copter or chopper. We, we cannot do that because of the safety reasons. But you know, you can see the pictures, what the copter club means, what it's all about. So I would like to turn the mic to them and please remember we don't have too much time. Thank you, uh, Laura. Good uh, afternoon, dear friends. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Ivan. I'm, uh, I'm coming from Donetsk. As Laura already mentioned, I'm participating in the, um, uh, in the ATO operation because I, I joined voluntarily our um, uh, army to defend our land. And uh, last year, I uh, actually I, 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 I was dismissed and I didn't know what to do next. And then I, I decided to volunteer and become volunteer in a new organization, Joan of Bandanbas, headed by Larissa Artyukhina. Actually, I uh, actually met with the experience which 
gave me another impetus what to do now, specifically uh, talking when we are um, and, uh, to, to say a few words about the carrying out the program or to renovate the existing schools. I came to understand that the, the situation in the rest of Ukraine is not really different from the from the uh, uh, frontline territory because children is our future. This is, you know, this is a, a very popular phrase, but anyway, today, like never before, it has a lot of meaning um, because the war takes place first of all in our minds in our hands and then it becomes the reality it becomes a reality and, and um, to the modern children must have an opportunity to uh, to draw from the ports of the nor uh, modern education sources I mean and to to obtain today what we needed in the past that's why with this um, uh, knowledge and experience uh, half a year ago uh, together with other guys it was Eric uh, who is here and we actually an idea actually uh, came to our minds almost at the same time we decided to create the space where the uh, the guys the, uh, the, uh, the 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 guys could learn how to fly and the uh, the equipment became accessible even from the financial point of view we started from some the chinese copters and then uh, more children in, uh, joined us and we started to 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 work uh, and we had a rather busy schedule and I came to understand that was the format uh, which was worthwhile to further develop and the civilian volunteers and local uh, guys started to join us we started to invite people from other cities let's give the city of Kiev for example because uh, the, the, we met with a big support and that in those days and it's still is provided to us the support from the um, pilot community. We have the uh, the uh, the drone racing, the copter races. Uh, we was started last year and it, it develops uh, uh, fastly. And we had the European Championship, World Championship, and this year we try to uh, to further develop this on our own and also to participate in uh, such competitions. We have the first drone racing team in Ukraine. This is the first, not only in Ukraine. This is the first, uh, if I'm not mistaken, even in Europe, because the junior, if we're talking about the junior copter teams, they have never been present before. So now we face the chance uh, for those um, uh, guys who had never had this uh, chance before, especially if you take in consideration it's a rather expensive luxury, Especially for the IDPs, you know, they unfortunately cannot afford that such a luxury. So, can you tell more specifics what they are doing? Maybe they themselves will tell us what is the assets, what you are doing in your uh, group, in your uh, in your club. Where do you take those copters? What do you, do you mean? What it mean to fly? And what does it mean to participate in different competitions? Maybe somebody will give us some more detail. Thank you for your question. Um, speaking in principle, to actually, to, to actually, our Chinese friends are making all those parts, like the electronic parts. And what we do, we uh, assemble. Finally, and there are a lot of different kinds of the drones of the. Uh, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles, UAVs, um, uh, and our copters are assembled. Not not only those which are going to participate in different races, but also we provide we just assemble different kinds of copters of drones for the search and rescue operations, and we provide the children with the opportunity to find find their. Uh, to apply their knowledge in different directions. Some of them believe themselves to be uh, the, the contenders, the sportsmen, so to say, it. why not? And there are other opportunities. There is the uh, the uh, camera, um, uh, camera, or let's say the uh, aerial, of, um, the aerial um, uh, mapping, or uh, let's say it's journalist uh, investigation efforts exactly and we need some uh, guys because in ukraine they do not provide training for such professions but recently uh, owing to the association drone racing we opened some of the academies or the training courses to uh, to, to to train uh, the former pilots 
operators. We are going to uh, share our experience. Uh, we have an experience of working with the guys of this age, with the uh, beginners, with the freshmen, so to say, yeah, uh, and the uh, novices, and they, uh, they, they are taught how to assemble the electronic parts into organized arrange the process them, they themselves actually study those things which have to be provided uh, by schools but they, for some reasons they are not provided and that's why we are doing that instead of the school uh, so guys can you tell us what, what does mean what kind of lessons or training sessions you have how often you have so those training sessions what do you do, do, do during those training um, uh, workshops etc um, good, uh, good afternoon, my name is Vlad, I came from the Crimea. For the first several months I didn't know what to do uh, in Khorasan, where we moved. Though, you, you know, I, I was studying this uh, town, this city. Once my friend invited me to visit the Copter Club Khorasan. I came there and I, um, I saw how they fly, so to say, and I came to understand that for me this could mean a future business. So I set myself a task uh, to, um, uh, to make everything possible in order to become, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to join the first, uh, the, the first three but three best, so to say, you know, the helicopter pilots. And, uh, and came to understand how not to just to operate the helicopter, or fly the helicopter together with fly. Where do you, do you have a, a, a lot of copters? Where you get those? No, we do not have just a few. Ivan bought the first copter for his own money, and then Ukrainian pilots uh, sent in some of, some more of those, and we assembled the race uh, drones. But not, not, not everybody actually can operate or, um, or control those. There was only uh, one and Andre. Andre is also you, another your instructor? No. He's one of the contenders, uh, one of the best pilots uh, in our club, perhaps. How old is he and where he comes from? He's 14 and he, he actually is a local Coruscant res resident. Eric, can you say a few words more? Good afternoon, my name is Eric Vasilenko. Me too, I'm an IDP. I, I, I came here from the Donbass area. During the war, I actually met one uh, the Roshni, and then sometime later he helped me to move to Korostin, where he actually found his new residence. For the first several months, uh, me too, I, I had some difficulties, you know, I didn't know what to do next. You, I was walking, just studying the local city, you know, and I tried to move on, you know, to continue to live, no, no for, trying to forget that you had to leave your native parts and your native city and you lost everything, so to say. But uh, when we, uh, when together with the one, we, um, we made the first step, uh, they climbed the first step, I would say, on the staircase uh, to lead into the uh, club, and they had a kind of gift, a present, the first uh, copter. When I, uh, I took it in my hands, I came to understand this is something which is very dear and close to me. You know, uh, when I made the first flight, and I came, uh, I understood that this copter is flying owing to my, my efforts. If I do something wrong, it will just crash. If I would follow all the necessary steps, it will land safely. What I like about the copters in, it, um, in this club, I have found new friends. We communicate, we crack jokes, you know, we have fun. But again, the safety regulations uh, is, uh, is number one uh, priority in our club. Uh, what about this idea, how this idea came about, you know, why, why specifically copters? And this is just amazing and very interesting. Well, uh, honestly speaking, to start with, Ivan wanted to buy a tank as a present. But when we came to Kiev to find such a present, we, we, we saw a copter. We didn't buy a copter in Kiev. Ivan actually placed an order through the uh, internet. This was the beginning of that. Everything started with a tank, you know. You know, Ukraine, the country which is uh, involved in the war for three years now, everything starts with a tank. I understand that. Well, but it's good when you start with a tank, but it turns out into a copter. And actually, a uh, very interesting organization that supported the races 
And we had the, the boat races, regatta, dedicated to the volunteer battalions, and also the, the other guys had a very interesting experience, you know. And I believe that uh, it's very important for us to dance, or our pleasure, that you can, can't do, you have kind of mixture. Uh, you you had to, 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 to somehow, the IDPs, they have to mingle with the local children, and we saw that you have a very good relationship between yourselves, friendly relationship, and you do not feel a kind of aliens or somebody who had was supposed to move to other cities. So, what about your relations with local guys in Corson? Uh, thank you. I would like to add a few words. Actually, we do not have any kind of division between different children. Nobody specifically said that you are IDP or not IDP, etc. Everybody in our club, they have the equal opportunities. Uh, you know, we are all, all different because of our nature, but we try to, 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 to find some kind of specific features um, in the children and help them to further develop those specific uh, original features. So uh, we, we, we do not try to, to make everybody be, you know, the same. This is our creator, if you will. And the guys, they find um, there's their common language themselves, some uh, common interests, and they, when they actually take care of the maintenance and repair work, and actually we use the money or the funds allocated uh, by the government of Latvia, and we do appreciate their assistance. We have a special base now, and the Ukrainian racers who helped us a lot, and again, thanks a lot to those guys and the local residents, including the construction workers, Yuri's uh, construction work, and when we ran out of money, he was uh, he had his small company, he actually donated some money to us as well. They understand that this is, was, this is really very important. So can you tell us how you, how you feel uh, how you live in Korstin? Do, do you have any problems in the, with the local guys? And you you mentioned already that this kind of the um, uh, kind of uh, when you didn't know what to do during the first several months when you moved to Korstin. On speaking, when I uh, came to, uh, to Korstin, it was very interesting. What what we uh, the attitude towards me on the part of the local guys? So for a couple of months, uh, first months. Uh, People kept asking me, uh, is it true that you came from the bus area? Is it true that there is a war uh, waged there? So I couldn't even understand why they asked those questions. But they actually, actually, they they accepted me. Uh, and they, 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 they demonstrated very good uh, feelings and attitude towards me. I almost immediately found the common language with local guys. And I didn't have any difficulties um, you know, later, I feel at home there. We communicate a lot. We walk together. We spend time together. You know, the same can say is the same. Uh, as soon as I joined the new school, they started to ask me, "Is it true that you came from the Crimea? Did you hear any shooting there?" But they forgot very quickly about that, yeah, and we start to to communicate in a normal way. You can speak Russian if you will, you know. No, I prefer to speak Ukrainian. Okay. Yeah, I feel comfortable nowadays in Kurdistan together with the members of our clubs and other friends. We walk a lot. We roam around the city in different parks, etc. Or the, uh, let's say, the special playgrounds, children playgrounds. It's nice there, you know. And the last question, no question uh, on my part before we perhaps start the Q&A session. Um, my question is addressed to you, Ivan. Indeed, we had some experience in when in the Lugansk region they started to, to renovate or restore the schools in the St Stanis Lugansk district. Ivan, you, you were a volunteer. You taught music to local children. I remember you had two flutes and um, you, Ivan, you, 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 you taught people how to play the flute. And then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, found two pianos, uh, upright pianos um, in some of the sheds. Uh, actually, I, uh, 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 
I, I could only help somebody else because I had some, I had an injured back. Uh, yeah, we 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 we, we <laughs> managed to take it out of the shed. I believe they, there was upright pianos in the normal condition now because in the conference hall they had a uh, kind of very old uh, uh, ruined piano. Okay, uh, actually you. You, you had the uh, nickname, the musician, you justified your nickname. Actually, when we came to, to, to meet each other in, in May 2014 in the new Petrivka Training Center, uh, we met each... Uh, yeah, they met me as the fighter, as a musician. Now you had such a turn in your uh, life. You actually you teach the children music, and I could see that with my one eye. So how it happened that you now start to, 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 to deal with the copters? I believe that music is very good, uh, but but um, you cannot make uh, earn enough money being a musician. In the end of our, as I said, during my previous life, uh, peaceful life, uh, I made a turn in my life, actually, and I believe there was a lot of different interesting things. It's very, very important to have such an opportunity, profession, which can bring you some money. If you would like to continue to be a musician, be a musician. But there are some other things which you can do in parallel, because many musicians, uh, you have some other jobs. They are creative people, musicians or artists. They do not limit themselves to some specific area. And they're usually they are uh, versatile, so to say, uh, persons. That's why I find many interesting things, not only music. Uh, I, I, one of my dreams in the childhood was to fly. And uh, so we, we started to develop this specific, um, uh, let's say, uh, area of life. And it allows me to, 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 to further develop myself. So you actually you grow together with the younger guys. Yeah, that's true. You, you, it's impossible to stop. They, uh, they, they are very, they, 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 they learn very quickly. And they will, they, they will come when they become better than their instructors. And because our task not to be better than themselves, but bring them to the uh, to the upper level. So at some level we stop maybe maybe though we try to 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 grow myself. But they have more potential, more opportunities. So the technology you're working on as the special training course or a kind of special uh, special let's say course of training, how to fly the copters. And to master this, not just as the uh, uh, kind of sports, but maybe uh, would be profession. This is something new to you as well. You yourselves uh, learn, you know, and uh, like it was sometime a case in your previous life. Yeah, I, 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 I was doing this music from the early childhood, but the copters became something new to me. I'm not an instructor. I'm not a teacher. Uh, I, I, I provide them an opportunity to learn. I help them to, to, to learn how to learn, you know. And that's uh, speaking principle what I can do for them. But we have a lot of very interesting contacts with many people who, when we are talking about top-notch experts who come, uh, who can come to us and teach our guys. And I, I, I would gladly invite everybody to come to us. We have a special base. And whenever we have the advertisement that we have, are going to have uh, some lecture on this or that topic, everybody is coming. They feel the difference between the lack of the local experts, specials, and the uh, visiting experts who come to them and bring some new information. The, you can feel it, actually, when you meet with a person who be has become or had become a real expert. Thank you. I think it would be... Uh, Expedient to provide the possibility or opportunity for the uh, our audience to ask the questions. I would like to once again say that we appreciate the assistance given by the Latvian Republic, the Embassy of Latvia, and our friend um, Karina Lea, the very head of mission of the Embassy of the Latvian Republic. And this is very important. And the Lucky Maidan philosophy, a drop in the ocean, it actually was spread to Europe. And our Latvian friends support us, and drop by drop, they help us to build a new 
country of Ukraine. Your question, Sergei Malevichuk, Ukrainian uh, Crisis Media Center. Do not worry, and they won. We, uh, thank you very much for your initiative. It's uh, really incredibly went. I mean, uh, this cooperation between the veterans of ATO operation and children, specifically, we're talking about IDP, so to say, children. This is the most uh, important collaboration in the society which is present, uh, which takes place today. My question is, how are you going to spread your, disseminate your experience? Do you have some kind of initiative group which can deal with this issue? For example, uh, like it was done by Lenin Spitzer, it's a veteran of the ATO ATO, he works um, with the project in creating franchise. I believe your initiative is no less important. I and uh, she would like this experience to be disseminated and spread um, different other uh, cities, especially where the uh, ATO veterans cannot uh, find their jobs and don't know what to do. I believe this is really important if you are talking about the social rehabilitation, both for the peace and the former fighters who participated in the war in the east of Ukraine. Thank you. So we are going to speak about our plans. So this is an experiment. This is a pilot project. And uh, we would like to have some results, to have good results. So uh, if you want to know a person, live four seasons with the him or her. So four seasons. This copter club should work in order to create an algorithm of actions and uh, to provide recommendations how to spread this to other towns and cities. And we help to create conditions that this self-organized group in Crosstail develop. And uh, uh, in about uh, half a year, we will be able to hold new conference to speak about results. And uh, this is a wonderful idea. Thank you. Maybe then we will speak about how to develop this pro pro uh, project. Uh, maybe we should invite people to Corestel and uh, provide the opportunity to first develop, then have results, because I know that they have gigantic plans. And this season that has already started, we want to participate in the maximum number of contests for adults and four guys got international pilot license after F3U. Uh, helped by Drone Racing Association, we joined as pilots, and each time competition happen, we will bring children there. This is important for us as a sport team, and as the members of the team, and for the town, because in such a way we bring new ideas, uh, and uh, we establish communication, and these are important aspects. And the initiatives like this, they emerge. And this year means a lot to us. That's why we are going to find money that is needed for the development, because uh, aircraft uh, is costly and we should buy some spare parts in large quantities and to involve children to construct, to create these crafts. And uh, we have plans to provide the opportunity to deal with it at the professional level. We can join sports activities in this and get experience. And uh, they can be sportsmen and uh, sporter and uh, be involved in other types of assistance accompanying these travels and uh, 
the guys uh, will understand and what way they want to develop and we will invite those who will help them develop in their area of activity. So maybe in half a year we will be able to answer your question, Sergey. Maybe we will. Unfortunately, we do not have time for further questions. Maybe the last question. Short question and short answer. Roman Kucharuk, Nation Information Agency. So the war will end and Crimea will return to Ukraine. What would you advise to Ukrainian government when it happened? To whom do you address this question? Maybe a guy from Crimea has an interesting opinion on this. I would advise to socialize people when Crimea returns. IDPs went from there because of occupation, because of Russia. And uh, it was uh, when Crimea was occupied, all my acquaintances went to the referendum to support Russia. And I don't understand why they went there, why they didn't support Ukraine then. So this is the opinion of a guy from Crimea. And I believe that Ukrainian power should build its uh, cultural information policy relating to temporarily occupied Crimea and uh, public television they create Crimea channel, Ukrainian news and events can be heard by Crimeans and we should have clear strategy that Crimea is Ukraine and without information interventions, without such actions, I don't want to use military terms. But we understand that we are amid information war and we should clearly understand that there are some trends in this information war. And uh, humanity elaborated the counteraction to this. We should create documentaries. We should create cultural modern product, Ukrainian product that can be watched by Crimeans, and this is the main, because we do not have opportunity for di uh, direct dialogue. That's why we should communicate through the broadcasting, through the media, through bringing fair information about how the IDPs are accepted in Ukraine, about our identity, where we are heading to, and our attitude towards what is going on in Crimea. And uh, in such way, we can be prepared to communicate again with those people who became hostages today in Crimea. I support your ideas. Thank you. So this is the end of press briefing. Thank you for this opportunity to speak.